Hello, my name is Noah Ingwersen and I'm an application engineer at AGI. Today we'll be talking about the upcoming 2024 R1 release for Behavior Execution Engine, which I'll be calling B. So the first major change for B in this release is the introduction of the SysML client. It's a user interface that provides a way to interact with your SysML project and also run simulations. So this client can be run standalone, as you see here, and it can also be run in STK. So that's what I'll be demoing today is the plugin to STK that enables you to use this interface directly in the tool. So I can open this interface in SDK by clicking this button in the toolbar. This is installed alongside B by user choice. So once I open that and configure my installation directory, we can now see the new SysML client. So this is a great addition because now I can load and execute my simulations from my SysML model without having to open it in a SysML modeling tool. I can do it directly in SDK. So first thing I'll do is open up my MD zip file and load that. So now we can modify values in here, execute simulations without having to actually open it in our SysML modeling tool. So with the project loaded, we have access to all the usual tools and features that you'd find in Behavior Execution Engine. And we'll come back to running a simulation, but first let me check out the other tools you'll be using while developing your model. So first on the Diagnostics tab, we have a variety of tools and reports that help when you're developing your model, understanding where elements are used throughout the behaviors and other diagrams, and also identifying potential issues in your model. So these should seem familiar from before. We have the model validation report, which shows where potential issues may occur in your model, so you can fix them before running a simulation. The delegate availability report shows which custom delegates I have loaded for each of the blocks in my SysML model. And then the block usage report shows where these operations and properties are used throughout the SysML model in our behaviors. On the code generation tab, this should look familiar from the behavior execution engine plugin before, but we've improved it with some finer control over the various elements. So if I go to the configure elements button here, I actually have an individual choice of how to generate each element, whereas before it was all grouped together. I also have enhanced settings for the delegate provider where I'm able to choose which elements are specifically included in that delegate provider. And we still have all the same functionality as before for generating this automatic code creation to a specific location. Finally, I have some application level settings for the tool that can be configured here, such as where your home delegate directory is um, and where the outputs of my simulation will go. So now let's look at actually executing a simulation. The example we're looking at here is a aircraft equipped with a beacon sensor that you see with this volume shown in blue. Its goal is to fly from its starting location to the objective location without entering the keep out zones. The sensor's goal is to detect the beacons from these keep out zones and avoid them as it flies towards that objective. So this is my nominal flight route here from my initial simulation. What I now want to do is walk through configuring a simulation with different initial values and seeing how that affects the result. So I'll start by selecting my simulation configuration that shows options from my SysML model. And what I can do is override the values from my SysML model only for this simulation so that it doesn't actually affect the SysML model we have saved in our file. I can also specify which specific values are outputs of my simulation so I can compare the results. The first thing I'll do is select an output here from my mission that will tell me if my aircraft enters any of those keep out zones throughout the mission. I'm also going to output the total flight time of the aircraft's route. And then finally, as an input I'll modify is the detection range of that beacon. I'm going to lower it to a value of 80,000, uh, which is 80 kilometers. So with this reduced range, we'll see how that affects our simulation. Now I can run this simulation and watch it execute in STK. 
So now that the simulation is complete, we can explore the results in this report. So if I open the report, it's going to show me the values I selected as my inputs and outputs. Um, so with this detection range of 80 kilometers, we can see that we did violate our keep out zones and our total flight time in seconds was about 6,800, so just under two hours. And we can also visually see which keep out zone was violated in our simulation. The last thing I'll show is if you have issues running your simulation, it's very useful to open the log and see what's going on during our simulation. So if I open the log menu from our actions, I can watch this log as my simulation executes and use that to, to troubleshoot any potential issues. And that's what's new in B2024R1. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to support at AGI.com or go to our website, AGI.com. Thank you.